have you on this good Friday night. We're going to have a wonderful time. I don't know about you, but I already feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, stand with me this, this evening as we begin. And for those that weren't able to be here tonight, we just want to let you know that tonight is a really special night. It's a night that it was just a little over 2,000 years ago, our Savior gave his life for us, for each and every one of us. And so we're going to just enjoy this evening worshiping God in praise and worship, and then we're going to hear God's word. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here this Friday night, a night that is named Good Friday. And so, Lord, we just thank you because in reality, it is Good Friday. Though our Savior had to die, yet it was good because through his death, we all have life. And Lord, because of his death and this weekend, we celebrate his resurrection on Sunday because, Lord, he came back from the dead. He came back out of the tomb, Lord, and that's the reason why we rejoice. Tonight has a very special and significant meaning, Lord, to us as believers also. So, Lord, tonight just let our hearts worship you in song and spirit. And, Lord, let us hear the ministry of your word tonight. We love you. We thank you. We praise you and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. Oh, you are my portion.
Would you just stretch your hands toward heaven this, this evening? Come on, let's just lift our hands. He's worthy. Worthy is. Come on, let's just sing that. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Sing it again. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. No, none other, none other but Jesus. Worthy is the Jesus this evening. Amen. How many just give him all the praise and worship he's worthy of? Can we just give God praise? Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm looking forward to heaven. Amen. I mean, I know that Jesus came to bring heaven into us, into our hearts. We know that. Amen. But boy, it's going to be something when we're in that literal heaven. And all the angels and all the elders and all that goes on in heaven, they're all going to be shouting what we just sang, worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Read your Bible. You'll see it says that in the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have a great time this evening. You know what? Why don't you, as we're going to, I'm going to ask Brother Ben, Brother Ben Shalufi, he's going to come and minister the word. It is beautiful to be in the house of God. We have a good uh, home group this afternoon, and really, it is amazing, you know, what God is doing in our lives. So, you know, I give the, the Lord, you know, all the glory. You know, yesterday, for, for many days already, you know, I'm preparing for tonight, what to speak. I'm going to share, uh, maybe, it will be the first time, maybe you will hear, it's in uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 12. And uh, especially yesterday, I was fasting and praying and crying to God. And I said, Lord, you know, I'm not even worthy, you know, to speak about the cross and about your blood and for what you have done for me, Lord. I mean, it is like, you know, I lived like to be close to the cross and to see what Jesus, you know, he did for me. And I believe, you know, tonight, God, you know, he will and he wants, you know, to touch the hearts of all of us. We need it. And I'm not going, you know, tonight to preach or teach, but I'm going to first to speak to myself. And if you will agree with me, just, you know, say, Lord, I want to hear the same. Because, you know, I believe that God, you know, he's still yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. And this cross is amazing. Because there is no other way, only by the cross. Because as you know, the enemy, he hates the cross. The enemy, he hates the blood of Jesus. And the book of, you know, the book of uh, Exodus chapter 11 and 12, I believe from all my heart, this is all the Bible. If we understand, we'll understand a lot of things. We know who is Jesus. And the book of Exodus uh, chapter or before, just let me read one verse and then um, we can go there. We can go to chapter 12. But look what God, you know, he said. Uh, Exodus chapter tw uh, 3 verse, from verse 6. Six to eight. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen in the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and Havites 
and the Jebusites. You see, God, you know, he appeared to Moses. And this is, we, we need you know, to learn about who is God and how God, you know, start with, when we go to uh, Exodus chapter 12, then we'll understand. God, you know, amazing. Our God is amazing. What he says, what he told Moses. He says, you know, I'm the father of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Always, you know, God, you know, he will, when he appear or reveal himself as he, the God of promise and covenant and protection. So what God, you know, says, verse 7, I love it from all my heart. Look what he says. God, he saw, he have seen, he have heard, he have seen their, their sorrow, their pain. But God, you know, he says, I come down for me and you. God, he doesn't want no one to be in Egypt. God, you know, he doesn't want us you know, to stay in the bondage and slavery in Egypt, the world. And God, you know, he told Moses, I'm coming down and I will take you out of Egypt. And this is, you know, God's promise for each one of us. You know, many times in our life, you know, we go to God and I will try, you know, to, you know, there is a lot of things, you know, I can, I want to share tonight, but, you know, I will let God, you know, be God and to lead me wherever, you know, he wants. But you know what? Many times in our life, we'll come to his presence and we'll ask for power. We'll ask for anointing. We'll ask you know, for healing. But you know what God, he will reply back? He says, good. But I want to take the sin out of your life. Because many times in our life, we forget that God, you know, he called us to be holy. Amen? We ask, and I will go through it. Let's go to Exodus 12. Just keep in your mind that God, he hears. God, he sees. God, he came down and he told Moses, I will take you out of this land, of this bondage. So God, you know, again, how, how I know that, you know, God's nature, God's personality, God's idea, God, his plan, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, before the foundation of the earth, before the angels, before anything, God, he knows. And the Son, he is the one that he says, I will come. You see, this is the plan of salvation. That, you know, how much more that we need, you know, to read about the cross and to understand the cross and to see the power of the cross. Because Paul, you know, he says in, in his let, one of his letters that about the Christians, they are the enemies of the cross. You see, he doesn't say that, you know, he hate the Christians. No, they hate Christ. No. They are the enemies of the cross. And you know, Pastor Larry, when he speaks you know, about uh, many times, about, and uh, the last Wednesday, you know, about repentance, about sin, about the holiness of God, and about all this, you know, don't blame him, because this is what the word of God. And always, you know, I said, you know, if you have problem, you know, tell God you know, about it, because this is his word. And we need to obey his word. You know, we need to follow him. And I will talk more about it. Let's go to Exodus 12. So uh, the Lord, you know, spoke with uh, Moses and Aaron. And he says, this is, it will be verse 2. It will be, you want to read, brother, in English? Maybe it's easy. And then we'll go. Yes. This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. What the first month? What God and he speaking here? He said that, you know, I will give you a new beginning, a new life. Yes. And it will be, and this is, you know, the same. And this is, you know, it's exactly in, in our time today because it's about the same. It's in April or Aviv in Hebrew means spring. So this is the time that, you know, God, and he says it will be a new beginning in your life. And when we accepted Jesus, I don't know how many years ago, yesterday, yes, or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, it doesn't matter. It, it is our new beginning with the Lord, walking with the Lord. But we'll see th through the, the, the verses after. It is not the end. And this is not everything in our lives. And many of us, we miss it. That there is much more just, you know, to start walking towards God and to leave Egypt. We'll see, you know, what God, you know, he told Moses. And we'll understand. Verse 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel. All the congregation of Israel. This is the first time well, God, he will reveal the congregations. And this is the church. 
God, you know, he speaks about the church. And later, you know, a few verses after, it says that invite your neighbor. That's mean the Jewish and the Gentiles, they are one, one body, one sacrifice, one lamb, one cross. There is nothing will separate. This is God's plan. This is not a human being. This is not Moses. This is not Aaron. This is not any prophet. This is God's plan. And again, you know, I will talk about it. And many times, you know, we come to God. Maybe, you know, I will now, you know, share a little bit, but later more, you know, I will share about it. That we come to God with our own recipe. With our own, what do you call it, brother? Uh, menu. We'll come to God and we'll tell God, you know, God, you know, I will follow you. But, you know, this is and this and this, you know, I want. We'll come to church with our own menu. We'll say, this is what I want to hear. And this is what I want to pray. And this is what I want to shake hands with people. And that's it. You see, we put our table in front of us the way that we want. And we'll see through the scriptures what God and his want to speak to our hearts and change our lives. We'll see what God and who he have for us. So he says, again, go to your neighbors too. Verse 4. And then what's happened? And then you will pick one lamb. And this one lamb, verse 5, it will be male, one year old. And I will share with you the way that you know, we grow up. But it will be a male. Why? One year old. I know from my country, from my culture, that one year old lamb, he will be healthy and strong. And the meat is fresh. Older, it will be harder. So Jesus, he have to be, this lamb have to be perfect. Male, because Jesus, he is the head of the church. And Jesus, he is the bridegroom for the church. What else? We'll see now. And it will be, you will keep this lamb for five days, from the day, from the 10th to the 14th, to see if this lamb, he's perfect to be sacrificed. And Jesus, you know, we know, and I don't want to go through with the, the numbers, because there is numbers, that the human being in the, in the book of, after the law, that the human, the man, he broke the Ten Commandments. So Jesus, he went to Jerusalem, he entered Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, it was the 10th day. So Jesus, he complete. Jesus, he, will, he, took, he, will, he took care of us in the cross with everything that did, we did wrong. We'll see now what's happened. I'll let you read the brother. So you will, um, verse 7. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then God, you know, and again, you know, when God, you know, he will say something. The other day, me and Pastor Larry, we was talking about the, the temple and the tabernacle and all this. You know, imagine, you know, how many details. You think that the human, you know, they can say no? Why? Or will change it? Will make it better maybe than God? You know, this is God's law. And when God, you know, he, he told them, you know, to put the blood, you see, in the, in the door outside. No one inside the, door, inside the house, he can be sure that you know there is blood or no but they believe it and we believe we need you know to believe that the blood of Jesus is over our, yes. our life yes. and over our family and yes. over our kids and over our everything in us because only through the blood of Jesus we have peace yes. you know Romans 5 8 it speaks you know, about the peace of God we'll see now what else Verse 8, brother. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Verse 8, verse 9. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head and its legs and its entrails. You know, we grow up in, in this, uh, my family, my mom, every Passover, every feast, you know, the Passover feast. My mom, my, my dad, you know, he will go to the market and they will buy the head. Exactly what, what the Bible says here. The legs, the internal pieces, and she will cook it and will eat it. And many times, you know, I will ask my mom, why are you doing this? She will say, I don't know, but we know this is our culture. 
And this is, you know, every, every year, once a year, you know, in Passover, we'll eat it, we'll enjoy. Me and my mom, usually she will give me even the brain from the head. It's delicious, we like it, we like everything. It's really delicious. But in that time, God, you know, he told them, don't cook it, but need to be burned. There is a reason, and I will go through these points, and there is another point that, you know, we'll have, we'll have the picture or we'll have the idea what God, you know, he's doing here and what God, you know, he's trying to teach us. So I will ask my mom, and my mom, she will tell me, I don't know. How you know? How you don't know? She says, you know, this is the way that, you know, I took it from my mom, and her mom, my grandmother, she will took it from her grandmother, and this is, you know, from generation to, to generation. But I said, why? Why we need to eat it in this day, in Passover? She says, I don't know. But you know what? After, you know, I, get, I, I give my life to, to the Lord, and I start reading the Bible, reading, reading the Bible, so I found out why. And this is amazing. Number one, this lamb have to be th go through the fire. And you know, this is, this is burned my heart, that Jesus, in the cross, he went through the fire. Fire of who? Not the Jewish and not the Roman. The fire of God the Father, his Father. Because this is the only way for our salvation. You know, again, you know, when we think about the cross, and we, we, when we come to the cross, you know, we need you know, to not only to bow our heads, but we need to bow our hearts. Say, Lord, thank you for everything, for what you have done for me in the cross. And I will, I will share tonight, maybe, you know, it will be my last time. I don't really, you know, but, you know, I want to glorify the name of Jesus. And I want to live the name of Jesus for what he has done in my life and through my life. Because without him, I will be dead long time ago. Without him, I will be lost. Without him, I will be in Egypt back. Without him, you know, I will be dead. Believe me. So he need to go through fire, Jesus in the cross to show the Father that his sacrifice is perfect, and he is holy, and there is no sin in him. He have to go through fire for me and for you, for each one of us. You think that the Jewish people in that time, Moses, he doesn't know? Absolutely, because read in Hebrews 11, he did all this by faith, the Bible says. How he can know? You know, how? How he can know and we don't know? How Moses, you know, and Aaron, they know, and they obey God in everything. They know. By, because by faith, the Bible says, the book of Hebrews. They, they, and now, you know, it comes to the three points, his head, internal, and his legs, what the Bible says. Why we need to eat his head? If this is, you know, it's all uh, talks about Jesus, then why, why the head? What the head of Jesus? And if we can read, you know, in Galatians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, because the head, the Bible says about the head of Jesus. The head means the mind of Jesus. Let us have the mind of Jesus, the Bible says. The thoughts of Jesus. The wisdom of Jesus. And we'll talk, you know, I will, I will share more now, you know, about eating. And about eating, that's mean we are in a relationship with him. Eating, that's mean we are in fellowship with him. And this is not once, once a week in Sunday that we can come to church and we can eat, no. And I think, you know, this is, many of us, you know, we misunderstand. This is every day. We need to come to him. And the Bible says, you know, in the book of James, he says, if anyone lack of wisdom, let, let him come. Who's the wisdom? Jesus, he is the wisdom. Because listen to the Bible in the book of uh, Exodus, he says, you know, to eat the head. We need to eat the head because I need the head. I need you know, to have the wisdom. I need you know, to have the mind of Christ. I, mean to, I need to have the thoughts of Christ. I need to have him. I need to have his head. I need to enjoy eating the head. If I need, when I need, yes, absolutely. But the question that if I'm hungry for him. Yes. If I will tell him, Lord, 
I don't want to open my mammy anymore. I will open yours. What else? And Philippians 2 5 speaks about it. And the legs, to eat the legs, to walk as he walked in this world. You see, every part in him, there is a spiritual meaning. And he will teach us, and he wants to teach us. You know, how to be close to him and how to be like him. And I said, you know, many times in my life, you know, I said, Lord, forgive me because many times in my life I blow it. But I'm coming back to you, Lord. You know, we, we read, you know, in the book of Revelation, you know, about the lukewarm and the cold and the hot. You know, the one that he's hot and he start hot with the Lord. And time in his life that, you know, he would be lukewarm. Guess what? He knows I need to get up and go back to my father. You know? Because I will be, I always, you know, I said, I will be the most miserable man in the face of the earth. Because I know how to be in God's presence and how to be away from God. And I love this too, that the internal organs, what speaks about Colossians 3, 20, 22, I believe. All his stomach and all this speaks about his compassion. Jesus, the Bible said that he went everywhere and to do good. Jesus, he saw the sick people and the hungry people and the needy people. The Bible said that he had compassion. And Jesus, you know how many times, you know, I will put my hands on my belly and I will say, Lord, give me your compassion. And how many times, you know, we need to do the same as Jesus. You know, if Jesus, you know, he went with compassion doing everything good. What about us? When we are his children, when we are his sons and daughters. So when we eat Jesus, and this is his invitation for every one of us. This is his menu, by the way. He says, you have to eat. And we'll come later, you know what the Bible says, you know, the same chapter. It's scary. Because in this chapter, if not, guess what? There is 36 times the Old Testament says, this soul will be cut off. You see? This is the word of God. It's not mine or the pastor. If we'll come to him, to his table, and we have sin, no. The Bible says, this, this soul, this person will be cut off. And many times, you know, happened. Many times, you know, read the, the New Testament. I don't want you know, to read from the Old Testament what's happened. But the, along the, from the Old Testament, 36 times, God, he said, this soul will be cut off. You know, there, it's not a game. It's not a joke. It's not just, you know, picnic. No, it's serious. With God, it's serious. And you know what the children of Israel in that time, Moses and Aaron, they knew. You know, if there is no blood in the doors, and the angel of death, you know, he will pass that night. Guess what? They are dead. And we are the same. You know, if we don't have the blood of Jesus in our hearts and in our minds, in our soul, in our emotions and feelings and everything, we are dead. Because only through the blood. But you know what? I believe, you know, from all my heart, many, they will be weak and tired and they doesn't know because they think that only the blood and it's enough. But Jesus, you know, he says in his word here, what we read, no, we need to eat him. Yeah. We need to have fellowship with him. Yeah. We need to spend time with him. Yeah. We need to know him. Yeah. And Jesus in the cross, you think that just, you know, he was suffering? He was suffering mentally, emotions, feelings, physically, everything, every part in Jesus was suffering, was crying. Every part was in pain. Where is his disciples? Where are the people? When he went to Jerusalem Sunday, we celebrate Palm Sunday. All Jerusalem, 
They were shaking. Few days after, what's happened? Crucify him. You think that we don't do the same? Just think about it. You think that Jesus, you know, he doesn't care? Absolutely. This is the way that you know, he suffered for us. That no one of us can have any excuse. Now, Jesus, he went through everything in life. Everything. Everything Jesus, he went through for me and for you. That no one of us can have any excuse. And the Bible continued that, you know, I will see the blood and I will pass. This is, you know, Passover, Pesach in Hebrew. I will pass only through the blood. But again, God, you know, he will give command to Moses. What he says, and by the way, you know, in Israel, every, even in Israel, more than 80% of them, they are atheists. They don't believe in anything. They believe in themselves. If you will go past, you know, Pesach time or Passover this week, seven days, Go to the supermarket. You know they will sell. They will when you go to the to the uh, supermarkets, they will put uh, covers or whatever because they are not allowed you know, to mix meat with the with the milk or cheese or whatever. So even the supermarkets, you know, it will be separate. You cannot you know buy. So anything with leaven, they cannot you know anything with yeast. You cannot buy anything. It will be you no know, in Passover. This is against the law. Even they are atheists. It's weird, but this happened. But the Bible for us, now we'll learn something you know, for us. The way that you know, we need to celebrate. You want to read verse 15, brother? 15. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. You see? And this is, you know, exactly this what Paul, you know, he says in Corinthians. This soul will be cut off. What the yeast means in the, in the New Testament? Sin, wrong teaching, anything against God. This is yeast. This is sin. And the Bible says, you know, believe me, you know, and we shared many times. You know, if we have, you know, God, you know, he will. You know, like Hanan and Sapphira and all these, you know, in the, in the New Testament. You know, what, what we'll have today? Seriously. And the Bible says again, 36 times the, the new, in the Old Testament, this soul will be cut off. You know, because the judgment of God will start in the house of God. When we come, you know, to the communion service to the table, just think about it. Just think about it. Why there is many in the church, they are sick? This why. Why there is many weak? This why. Why they, many, they are asleep? This why. If we don't wake up, guess what? It is serious. And again, it's not a game. Don't blame God. Seven days, that means it's not only seven days. It's not only one week. Number seven is completion. Num number seven, this is what, what God, you know, he gives commands. This is forever, till he comes back. And this is not only for the children of Israel, because if so, Paul, he doesn't pick it. And he doesn't tell us. Let's say, Pastor Levy, just let's say, go back, and then I will go somewhere else. Verse 11. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. What so the you reason why God will he command Moses this way? When they eat it, they need to be ready. Ready for what? Remember, number one, the blood. Number two, to eat the lamb burn and not to keep it from the next to, to the next day 
Because when Jesus he died on the cross, they buried him the same, the same day, the same time, before the sun set down, before the, the feast started. There is no tomorrow. And this is, the, this is the same way back home. When somebody will die in the morning, they will bury him the same day, or in the afternoon, or in the noon time. When somebody will die in the afternoon, they will wait for the next day and they will bury him in the morning. But Jesus, you know, he, but God, you know, he told Moses here that tell the people of, of Israel, when they put the, the blood, when they eat, they need to be ready. And we need to be ready. And this is, you know, this is what, what God, you know, he wants us now to learn. It is not just, you know, to be, to say, I'm saved and I have the blood of Jesus and I'm staying in Egypt, enjoying life there. How many times, you know, we want the same, we want both. We like Egypt, in the same time, you know, we want to get out of Egypt. But what God, he told Moses here to do, to eat it and be ready. The waste, the Bible says, belt with a belt on your waist. What does it mean? What does it mean now? Means for us to be ready to leave Egypt. I am ready. Because the West is the center of the power, of the strength. I am ready to leave Egypt. You know, when this son, he left his father and he went back and he went far away and, uh, you know, he lost everything. You know, he lost everything. He doesn't have anything and he starts eating the pig's food and all this. Then, you know, he remembered. He says, you know what? God, he loves me. The, my father, you know, he loves me. But you know what? I will stay here. You know, he will forgive me, but you know, I will stay here. I don't need to go. But no. This is not God's menu. God's menu, he says, there is a blood. I saved you. You have peace. You are safe. You are secure. But you will eat the lamb. You will have fellowship with me. But you are ready now to leave Egypt. Because the Bible says in Peter that we are holy nation. We are kings and priests. And we'll see now the rest. There's two more. And the sandal. And the Bible says when this son, you know, he came back to his father. The father, he put the ring. And he put the robe. And he put the sandal. Sandal, that's mean, you know, we are walking in new life with him. Everything changed in our lives and have to be, you know, and this is, you know, the power of God in our lives. You know, when somebody, you know, he will give his life to Jesus. This is, you know, this is the most, this is number one miracle, you know, I believe from all my heart. This is divine work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It will be a miracle changing life. And this is only by God. The pastor, you know, he can preach through the word, but only the work of the Holy Spirit can convict people and can transfer the people heart. So they need to be ready. And what number three, the Bible says, and they have the staff in their hand. What does it mean? You know, the Bible says over and over, we are strangers in this land. Where is your heart? Where is our heart? In what? Cars and money and jobs and homes and position and what? If we are his king, we are, he makes us kings and priests. And the Bible says over and over in the Bible, in the New Testament, and even the Old Testament, and even though if you were, if you were read Hebrews 11, all of these heroes of faith, they count themselves as they are strangers. Staff in their hand. Who have the staff to Moses? We remember what God, you know, he did. This is the power of God. This is the only thing that you know, we can depend on in our journey. There is nothing else. Again, this is his menu. We tried. Like one time, you know, when I heard, you know, this uh, evangelist in 1950, he was talking and this one elderly lady, she said, he came to somewhere in England that time to preach and they was talking and she said, I want to ask a question. Did you try God? And he looked at her and he's a preacher. He is very well known in that time. And, and he looked at her and he says, no. She says, go and pray. 
Many times in our life, you know, we need to be alone with God. I'm late, right? No? <laughs> Sorry. If you are tired, uh, just let me know. You know, Jesus, you know, I will go now to the New Testament, but we don't need, we, need, we know all the stories. We know the stories. In John uh, chapter 6, verse 53 and 54, and uh, from 53 and 50, 56, the same chapter, and this is again, the people in that, this chapter, the pastor, he, he shared it before, and I, will, I would like you know, to share it again. These people, you know, the Bible said that, you know, they was following Jesus because of the miracles. They have their own menu. Jesus, he fed thousands. So th this multitude of people in chapter 6, you know, they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, feed us again. <coughs> feed us. Give us. Bless us. Touch us. What Jesus, you know, he said. And Jesus, believe me, you know, he will say the same to us. He says it's enough. You want your menu? No. What Jesus, you know, he said. You want to read, brother? Listen what Jesus, you know, he told them. Yeah. The Jews, therefore, quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at that last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood <coughs> abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This, bre this is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna, and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. Did you hear what, what the Lord saying to us? Jesus, me, he told them it's enough. How many times we come to church and we accept just God, feed me, give me, bless me, touch me. I want this and I want this. We'll come with all our own menu to, to the Lord. Every Sunday or every Wednesday or every day even when we go to God. And God, you know, he will say it's enough. You want to follow me? Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. Have relationship with me. Where I am. And again, there is another story in Matthew 19, verse 16. You don't need to read it, uh, Pastor. This is the rich man. He says, what shall I do? And Jesus, and he told him, you know, with the law? And he says, ah, yes, of course. I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't lie, I don't adultery, I don't anything. I'm perfect. This is man. And sometimes, you know, we think that, you know, people in the church, they're coming and, you know, they are whatever, you know, they are the same as this man. They have their own menu. I am better than anyone else. I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't cheat, I don't this. Jesus, do you know what? He says, fine, good. I will open for you my, my menu now. What he said? He says, go. Sell everything what you have and fo follow me. This Jesus menu. But this man, he did. He left sad. You see what the difference? You want to ask Jesus menu? Watch out. Because it's serious. And again, it's not again. Jesus, you know, he will never, you know, go back after this young rich man. Back him, please, you know, follow me. Come, I will make you a member. Come, I will make you a good disciple. No. And the Bible said that Jesus, he was sad. 
Why? Because this man, he preferred to have all his money than to have Jesus. And I like the story in Mark 10, verse 46, about the blind man. And there's many stories I like, you know, to make it as for us as how to be hunger and thirst after God. This, young, this blind man, Jesus, he was in Jericho in that time. And his name is Bartimaeus, blind man. He hear that Jesus, you know, he's coming. And these are screaming. He says, son of, son of David, son of David. And these are screaming. And what the rest of the disciples and the people that are following Jesus, what they told him, be quiet, shut up. Why you are screaming? You think that the master, you know, Jesus, you know, he will stand, he will stop, and he will call you? But this man, you know what? He was screaming again till Jesus, you know, he stood, he stand, and he called this man. He says, son, what he wants me to do for you? In my own interpretation, he says, Lord, I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you, Lord. If you don't feed me, if you don't touch me, I will die. You know, this man, he came and he knew. If I will bring to Jesus his, my menu, his menu, he will touch me. And again, we want to see miracles and healing and all this. Amen, me too. But you know what? We need to come to God according to his word and to according to his menu. Yes, yes, yes. And say, Lord, do whatever you want in my life. And there is another two verses and that's it. In Song of Solomon chapter 2, he says he brought me to his bank, banqueting house mm -hmm. and his love over me is love or his love. Jesus, you know, he wants us, you know, to come to him. Jesus, you know, he wants us you know, to come and to have fellowship with him. Jesus, you know, he wants us you know, to come and eat with him and drink with him. Jesus, you know, he wants us. You know, when I start reading the Bible years ago, when I get saved, when I give my life to Jesus, I was laying my, my hands every day in God's word. I said, Lord, and I believe it, like a baby. You know what I will say to God? God, teach me your word. Burn my heart when I read your word, burn my heart. And I believe it. This is his word. And the Bible says, he will and he is always. Because this is what he says, that the anointing that he give us will teach us everything about the truth of the word of God. So Jesus, you know, again, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, when he said that, I'm standing at, and, at the door and knocking. If anyone, he, he will hear my voice and he will let me in. But he says, I will sit with him. I will eat with him and he with me. You know, and again, eating, you know, Exodus chapter 12 about the lamb. This is he wants, you know, this is his hard desire for, follow, for, for the fellowship with him to have intimate time with him, to know him. When's the last time that you know you come to God in prayer and just you know you spend time with him? You know many times in my life and I miss it back home and different places, people they would invite you know, for food and I will sit and guess what? One will pray, it will be prayer meeting. We'll end praying after two, three hours in the table. Please, you know, tonight, just leave your manual. Please say, Lord, I will do whatever you want me to do in my life. You want me to eat you, I will eat you, Lord. I need your head for wisdom, I will eat. Everything in you, I want it, Lord Jesus. Everything in you, Lord. The Lord is here. He's in this place.
Easter tonight is Good Friday or whatever, you know, they call it here, but, you know, the crucifixion story, it's need to be in our hearts every day. Just let's bow our heads and our hearts. And I would like you know, to, to thank the Lord, I want, personally, and make it publicly. Just to thank the Lord, you know, for, for everything what he has done in, for me in the cross. And I hope that, you know, every one of us, you can come to the front and just, you know, have personal, even will take time, you know, after we'll finish. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the cross, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying the cross for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your wounds. Thank you, Lord Jesus that you give everything for me, Lord. Even I don't deserve anything, Lord Jesus. But you said, Lord Jesus, that you love me to the end of the cross, Lord Jesus. Even though they were telling you, come down. But you said, no. Thank you, Jesus, in the cross, you cry out for Jesus, that you said, Father, forgive Ben, for he doesn't know what he's doing. Burn my heart, Lord Jesus, I pray. Where we shall go, Lord Jesus, and you are the Savior. Where can I find peace, Lord Jesus, and you are the peace, Lord. Hallelujah. I give you my life, Lord Jesus. I give you everything, Lord Jesus. Because you are worthy, Lord Jesus. And not only to be the Savior, but I want Lord Jesus to be the Lord of everything in my life. Jesus, I need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That you are a faithful God, Lord Jesus. Thank you. That in the cross, Lord Jesus, what your word says in Isaiah 53 that I was in your mind, Lord Jesus. You know my name, Lord Jesus, before the foundation of the earth. You know everything, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord Jesus, to be served. You are worthy, Lord Jesus, to be loved and to obey and to follow you and to serve you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. To receive all the glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I hope that you know we have time tonight. Just I don't know how you feel, how the pastor. But you know, I would like you know that not only me, but anyone can just you know personal, but just just you know thank him. You know, whatever it is. You know, he deserves. Amen. We're going to have time to pray here. Um, you know, I like what Brother Ben said tonight. What's on your menu? 